Ja, tja. Det är jag. Budlabs pojken. Vi fortsätter väl att greja mojsa här med webbläsaren Vivaldi. Jag tänkte att den här videon så ska vi försöka flytta de här extension button group grejen här in i status bar. Wow. All right. All right. This video, uh, you see I have this page open here. It's from the Vivaldi forums. Um, the modification section. I have found a thread here uh, about how to move the extension icons into the on the bottom of the browser. Uh, is the topic and um, it is uh, an old and somewhat long three pages long uh, uh, thread started in 2017 and if you read this thread you can see uh, several different uh, more or less uh, broken solutions but the last post in this thread uh, is actually a, a good enough solution for me And we can find it here, this code block. Uh, and if you know your uh, programming languages, then you can see that this is uh, JavaScript uh, code. So we will now add this JavaScript code to Vivaldi, so it will use this. And this JavaScript code, what it does is uh, it uh, locates the status bar It locates the extensions and then it moves the extensions into the status bar. And it also does some tests here to see that it can do it uh, and things like that. It's kind of a short script, easy, easy peasy. I went ahead and, and copied it, uh, so I got it here. Uh, but how do we add this uh, JavaScript to Vivaldi? Because remember, uh, we, we set up this um, CSS uh, special directory where we can just place uh, CSS files here uh, directory for custom CSS UI you cannot place JavaScript files here They, uh, this only works for CSS uh, to, to add JavaScript uh, customization modification things like this which you can find here on this forum you can also find it on github and things like that you know And of course, I guess I have to say this. These are uh, user contributed uh, dirt hack modifications, you know. Vivaldi doesn't support this, the Vivaldi sub uh, team, they just allow this uh, to happen because uh, that's one of the selling points of Vivaldi that you can customize it and that everything is built with the JavaScript, HTML and CSS. So it's in quotation marks, easy to modify it uh, to your liking. But um, Many of these are, are kind of broken or doesn't work with the latest versions and so on. And I, me, Budlab or Budrich or whoever I am, you know, uh, I also don't really, I, I cannot support this. I cannot recommend you using this. It's, it's up to you if you want to, to do it or not. Just a short disclaimer there. Um, so if it doesn't work on your system, try to fix it, you know. Or don't use it if, if, if you want everything to be perfect every time. But if you're <laughs> such a person, you are probably not watching this channel. Uh, the JavaScripts, they are located in the Vivaldi installation directory. Which we can find here. Opt Vivaldi resources Vivaldi. So it's actually in, in the file system itself here. I have uh, the root directory open here in Thunar. We can find the opt directory here somewhere. Uh, 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 opt, I'm stupid, there it is. And here you can see some botnet programs that I have installed. Uh, Vivaldi, resources, Vivaldi. This is the, the directory where uh, Vivaldi stores its resources basically. Both uh, JavaScript files, but you can also find Uh, the, the default user styles and stuff but I think the CSS is, is kind of readable even if it's like uh, one million lines long 
Yeah, it's about 16,000 lines of CSS that makes up the whole UI, but the JavaScript files, they are all minified, so they are kind of impossible to interpret what's going on. Uh, but you can add custom, uh, your custom modifications and stuff here uh, if you want to. And I thought, let's, let's do it like this. There are a couple of things that are different with this uh, from the CSS method. And one important thing is, of course, that we are here in the systems uh, directory, so to speak here. So, oh, I hope I didn't modify the file there. Okay, if I go to this directory, for example, or let's go here. And then I do LSL and then we can see the directory is owned by root and you need root privileges to add uh, files and uh, modify these files. So you will need to, to use sudo here to, to do stuff. But um, whatever. That's one thing. Another thing is that uh, um, the changes you do here uh, will affect all uh, profiles uh, you have on Vivaldi, uh, which is different from the CSS modifications because they are um, user independent. But the JavaScript modifications, they will uh, apply for all users of the browser, which can be good to know if you're uh, having multiple profiles. Uh, and a third important thing to know here is uh, that uh, it is not, you, you can, cannot be sure that your changes you do to this system directory here, OptiVivaldi resources Vivaldi, that the changes you do here will persist when you update Vivaldi. They probably will not actually, uh, especially the browser HTML file here, which is the most important file. Um, this is where you link all the, the JavaScript files that you want to, to use. You shouldn't remove any of these default ones, of course. But uh, if we want to add our own files, it's not enough to just add a file to this directory. We also have, have to add a line here uh, to include our uh, JavaScript. And for that, you also need pseudo privilege. Privil pri yeah, you get it. So I copied that code block. The last one in this thread, I will link the thread in the show notes and I copied this code block, got it here. Let's uh, copy it again and create a new file. Let's create it here in our local uh, directory here. You can create a, a directory called JS and then we can call this ext in status.js. Close without saving save that guy there now we have a file here locally <clears throat> and i thought let's let's do this uh, uh, immediately here create a, a simple script that will do all this for us Cop copy this uh, javascript file into this uh, system directory and also add the line into the browser uh, html and then it will be really easy to update this uh, directory when uh, we update the browser Otherwise, you have to mess around with this and stuff and remember where it's located and whatnot. It's a really simple script. Check this out. Uh, we can create the script in this directory, I guess. Uh, install uh, JS Vivaldi or add Vivaldi JS dot bash. So we know it's a bash file and not a JS file bin bash now we got that file here as well so what we want to do is move all uh, js files in this directory into this directory uh, let's do this copy the path to that directory here store it in a variable opt d is equal to this uh, we also want the directory for the script itself here and i will uh, borrow another script which I thought I had somewhere did I remove that no I think we got it there close here it is so these lines will just store the directory of the script itself in a variable called deed here um, and then all the JavaScript files we can store them in an array here 
that the array looks like deed slash star dot js. Um, and then some kind of a loop for f in files do. Uh, we could just echo file here first to see that everything is working. Um, we we'll also have to make the script uh, executable. Add the Tivaldi JS bash. All right. If we execute that script, um, God damn it. Add tab key. All right. There, this is our script. It just prints the single file we have here. But uh, just to show you here, if we create uh, more files here, more file.js. And notice I have a space in the file name here. Uh, maybe we can create one more. One more moa file.js. Executing the script. Now it will print all three files here on separate rows, meaning it uh, this globe here we, we added, it actually adds uh, each file as a separate uh, uh, array element. Great. Um, we also need that browser um, file. So we can do browse is equal to opt-d slash browser.html. Um, I also think I want to make a local copy of that, so we copy that into this directory. We can start by doing that, cp browse, browse local, we execute our script, and there, now we got a copy of that uh, important file. Mm, okay. Yeah, I guess we should do something like this also. I got a bunch of old files open here, it gets confusing. All right, this is our local copy of the system uh, browser HTML here. They are the same thing. So we want to add a line looking like this, but with the file names of our uh, guys here. So I will copy this line here. Add the valid JS string is equal to this, but not really. We want to replace this with the file name of our file, which could be written like this. So it will strip the everything up until the last slash, meaning the file name. I actually think I prefer to use a printf here. Maybe it's not 100% necessary, but whatever, we do that anyways. There. And then we can do echo string and see how that looks. Yes, this is exactly what we want to include or not really. Because we want uh, the double quotes here. It's kind of important here. So let's put this thing inside single quotes. There, perfect. This is a string we want to add to the browser file. We want to add it to this list. Uh, more specifically, we, we kind of want to add them uh, as the last items in the list. And the easiest way to uh, identify the end of this list is to look for the end of the body here, because this, that's a, yeah, this is the body, it con just contains this list of, of JavaScripts. So we will use some said magic here said in browse local. Uh, 
and we are going to substitute yeah I will write the whole thing here space star backslash parenthesis I will just write it and then I will explain what's going on here because it's uh, kind of a advanced uh, said thing here. I think we can just do that. And then now it will do this for each uh, uh, file in our loop here. So let's just break out. We just do it once, otherwise we will get a lot of output here. There, now it prints out uh, um, this. The last line here is of course string here, so maybe we should just remove that. Let's just print an empty line there. Sorry for this. There. Now we can see we replaced body uh, with our string, or we replaced this whole line here. Uh, with our string and now we don't have a closing body tag and stuff here and that's kind of annoying uh, and we also got this ugly uh, no indentation here but that is why I wrote all this crap here uh, I put the spaces at the beginning of the line with the closing body tag here put all, all uh, uh, white space characters in a group here with parentheses and instead you need to escape Parenthesis, so backslash uh, parenthesis here. That's one group and body, I put that thing in uh, another group. And then you can actually use these groups in the replacement string here. So if we do this, um, I think this will work. There. Now it added the body, it indented everything perfectly and it looks nice, right? And how this works is, uh, since we have uh, the, the space here on the body line, which is this space here, currently it's two white space characters. That's stored now in backslash one, the first group. Uh, and then we can use that uh, group here containing two spaces. And I know I want to in indent this uh, script thing two uh, layers here so backslash one backslash one that will uh, translate into four white space uh, or four spaces here then we print string then we print a new line and then we print uh, white space group again so two spaces and then we print the second group which is the uh, body tag we were searching for uh, so this is great and Then we could do this instead if We don't echo and don't break here and use the I flag and Execute the script Nothing seems to have happened, but if we look into browser now, we can see that it have added all our uh, files Which is great, which is exactly what we want um, Problem though is if we execute it again It will work, but now uh, it should have added the files again, I think. Well, it didn't really do that, right? Why didn't it do that? Ah, that's right. What we are doing, we, we copy the file every time now, right? Um, CP. Yeah, it's probably this. If we would leave this out, um, look at it now. Now we've got duplication here. Every time we do this, it will add them again. Um, we don't want that. 
Let's clean up our local browse file here. So we just got these three that we added. And then we also add a test here. Uh, we can grep. I think it's enough to just grep for our str here. Uh, this uh, block here in browse local. Um, we output uh, the output to dev null, so we don't have to see it. The results of grep that is, uh, and also if uh, this is true, if if we find a match here for string, that that means the line already exists, and then we don't do this. But if it doesn't find it, or we do this, so. I like to use this notation, as you might know. And now we should never get the uh, duplication here. Grip, browse, load. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah, now we got duplication there because we had a syntax error. All right, there. Now we did a bad anything. And if we would remove two of these here now, we should re add them. There they are. Perfect. This script is amazing. What we also want to do uh, is copy uh, the, the actual files here into the uh, opt, opt deal here. So we could do that. And th now we need sudo. Sudo cp. And I, I use force here. We could use uh, fi to get an interactive prompt in case the files exist, we, we get prompted for it. I think it's a good idea to do that here. Uh, copy f into opt d. Running the script. There, now we got the files here. I also got the folder open here so we can see the, the changes. Uh, but we still have the old uh, stupid browser HTML here, but all we need to do now in our script is move our new uh, and may be improved uh, browse local to browse and mv force. Now it asks, asks us here, because we are using I flag, if we want to overwrite uh, the, the currently existing ext instead of, yeah, sure, do that. Overwrite everything. And now it also moved uh, our local browser here into browser. And that's it. That's how you install uh, <laughs> JavaScript easily in, to Vivaldi. And now if Vivaldi would uh, update, we just have to navigate to this directory here and run this script again. Or we can actually put this script in our, uh, uh, assume link this script into our uh, bin folder or something because it uh, reads here the path and finds the directory to this actual script. So just add this script to the directory where you store your uh, JavaScript modifications and then it will be super easy to install them. Should also add uncomment this. All right, uh, let's see if it worked. Uh, nothing happened in Vivaldi now, but if I restart it, looks like this. Extension buttons are in the status bar. Success, the script worked. But I would also like to move uh, this button and this button and the reader buttons and stuff. So let's um, let's open a web page first and foremost, uh, so we can see a reader button, because the reader button is not uh, visible if uh, reader mode is not available, which it isn't for this page. But I know that the Wikipedia pages always have uh, reader mode available, so let's search for Vivaldi or something. And now we can see the reader button, we can enter it, we get the 1993 mode, it's really cool, it's great. Go back, we want to move that button as well. We can also see some other uh, crap uh, in, in the status bar here. You see some numbers and stuff here, it's the progress. Um, so what we need to do here is identify these elements 
let's inspect and see if we got a good uh, identifier for them yeah we got a button called reader view we could probably use that um, but I would also like to move this button and the thing is all of these buttons belong to a, a group here but this group have kind of a, a suspicious name in my opinion there are other uh, class uh, things or elements with the same classes and stuff but there is only one element with this uh, class name url bar url field wrapper which is uh, yeah you get it the, the rest of the uh, url bar there uh, so what we can do is using this as an identifier and then copying its uh, sibling the next element here so our group here the button group is the sibling to the url bar field wrapper that's at least how i have done it here so let's copy this class name let's open our javascript and then we we add this uh, guy here I will not go into any details on how JavaScript works because I <laughs> don't really know. Uh, and then we can call these uh, inside buttons or something. Uh, but we also select the sibling. Next sibling. Uh, we also want to move this guy. Uh, Tootsie. Same thing here, uh, we can identify it with the one of these classes or more uh, and I have found that uh, it is the only only place in the UI that uses this class name button circular image is only used for this as far as I know this may or may not be a bad ID but whatever it works uh, as far as I know so let's use that here as well button circular image remove next sibling from that guy and change uh, the variable name here to uh, prof btn and then what i do here is i just add more here because here we append extensions we add that to the status bar but we could add these guys as well here the prof button and inside button save now uh, to update this uh, we have to run our script again and now you start to see the benefit of this otherwise we would have to open this with pseudo privileges with the in a pseudo version of sublime maybe or maybe not to you blah 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 it's much more convenient to do this uh, run the script again overwrite yes no no uh, restart vivaldi Now it looks like this, beautiful. We can see now that button is here and we got some weird stuff here. This is the action, this is that progress text that we saw earlier. But now it uh, looks completely different and we have some weird bar and stuff here. None of this is uh, something we really want here. Uh, we can also see, maybe we should install a couple of extensions to make it even more uh, visible here. So I will just install some extensions here. Stylus, we will need that later, so why not install it now? Yes, add extension. I will install uh, Violent Monkey. This is just because I want some buttons here in, in the status bar. We can immediately see the, the stylus icon there. Violent Monkey, yes, please. Add extension and redirector. Yes, please give it to me. All right, this is how it looks now. Terrible, terrible. But uh, now when we want to style things, then it's much better to do that with uh, CSS. And I have actually prepared this a bit, so this video will not go on forever. I have prepared a status bar JS here. This uh, thing here forces the buttons uh, to be uh, displayed in 24 pixels. Uh, changing the size of them and I think that's uh, that will make it look a whole lot better here but this only affects the extension buttons because you can see if you if you look closely here here is the status bar top border 
But then the extensions buttons, they are actually a little bit larger than the status bar, so they have the top border above here. It looks kind of broken. Uh, but the rest looks fine here. The profile button is okay. The status bar and the toolbar add bookmark is here now. It's uh, we, we get to it, but it's it's fine. We just add this stuff here first. Uh, exit Vivaldi. Open it again. Now the extension buttons looks more uh, like they belong in the status bar here. Great. And also we can see that the pop-ups works here. This is important. Test this and, and make sure this works. If it doesn't work, it's probably because the address bar is located uh, at the top. Uh, let's see if we can do this now. It might break things here now. When you install this JavaScript stuff, then when you move things around in the UI and stuff, it, it, it weird stuff can happen. But uh, let's see if it works. Address bar, position, top. Okay, now the address bar is uh, positioned at its normal position. And now the pop-ups doesn't work because the pop-ups of the extension buttons, because without this JavaScript injection, remember the extension buttons are located here to the left of the address field. Uh, and the pop-ups of the extension buttons uh, are either displayed below the extension buttons if uh, it's located at the top here and above the extension buttons if uh, the bar is located at the bottom, of course. But right now, the extension buttons, they think that they are located here in, in the address bar. Uh, so the pop-up is actually now displayed below the, the buttons. Uh, but this, uh, as soon as you move the address bar to the bottom, it works. So that's important. Let's close Vivaldi again. Uh, or let's open it again. Because I have this other guy here, zoom controls with thing. That is here, you can see, 110 percent because this uh, block here have a fixed width and uh, with our font size settings and stuff it it uh, wraps the text so we get a two line thing here we really don't want that in our status bar so by setting the width of that text to auto then uh, we will not have a double line there now that looks much better now we just have to fix this and we do that by hiding a bunch of elements here. I have them here. Uh, page load, that is uh, this uh, stuff here. And it's a big group here of things. Uh, so we hide that. And I also hide some the trash icon here. I also hide a uh, new, new tab button. We will hide the whole address bar itself with CSS here. It's important that you do it with CSS. Uh, otherwise you will get weird stuff with those pop-ups pop and stuff, uh, but this works. Uh, and also hide uh, button toolbar reset zoom. And that is this reset button here, which you can press if you change the zoom here. So if you want to, you could hide it. Otherwise keep it if you like it. And I will also hide the range control itself here, this uh, slider thing with this CSS. And as you can see, I just added them as a list here to our hide stuff uh, thing. And now, Vivaldi looks like this. No address bar. Uh, it looks uh, fine, I think, this. And also, uh, just short uh, thing here. Now, the extension buttons are placed here. Then we have the profile button, and then we have those uh, extra reader mode and add bookmarks and stuff. Maybe you rather would have these uh, bookmarks and reader mode and whatnot in, uh, to, to the left of the extension buttons. Let's open uh, Viva, Viva La Vida. Uh, if you wanted to, to have the reader button and add bookmarks and stuff to the left of the extensions, then we just change the order in our JavaScript where we uh, Add these. So if we wanted these first, you know, then we just add them before we, we append the extensions. You get it. It's easy. Reload the script. Overwrite. Yes. 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 And also these dummy files here. These are just empty JavaScript files. And yes, we installed them now uh, and uh, even included them here to the browser uh, HTML. But since they are just empty files, they will not do anything. But of course, you shouldn't add empty JavaScript files and bloat your 
configurations like this. It's just to show you uh, that you can add multiple files with this script and it doesn't matter if it's uh, spaces in the file names and what, what not. Uh, reload. Hello. This is how I like my Vivaldi setup. If you want it even more minimal, uh, last thing here, it's really short, it's easy. You can go into uh, settings, select address bar, uh, and then you have extension visibility. If you select toggle all extensions, then they are all hidden uh, under this button here, which may or may not uh, be nice to, to have it. I, I actually prefer to have them visible. I think it's uh, it's fine. It's Sometimes there are information in these bubbles and stuff that can, can be nice to see. Uh, and now we have saved a lot of vertical space here by just displaying this uh, 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 status bar and having all the functionality in that guy. Virtual International Authority file. We got the reader mode, it works, everything works. There's only one thing that doesn't work and that is um, full screen. Search for BudLab. BudLab. Cannot even spell my own name. Uh, look at some BudLab video maybe. Mute. Good. Press full screen. Breaks. It's broken now. We, we have to restart the browser. Um, and this will be true uh, with, as long as we are using this ext uh, in status bar hack here in our uh, uh, yeah our JavaScript thing here. If I uh, comment this line out, uh, we will not have that. We will not have the extensions in the status bar. And now we cannot see them at all because we have hidden the address bar. But I just want to show you here uh, on YouTube that this is this doesn't matter that much really. It is really annoying if we by mistake uh, press that uh, full screen button. Uh, but, but now it would work here. This works fine. But pay attention on how slow it is to, to go into full screen mode. And that it kind of... Mm, 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 it resizes the video like three times or something. It's, mm, mm, mm. it's not cool, you know. Uh, but now with this picture in picture thing, you can do this instead. Open it in a, a separate window, which is just great to have. And then we can open this guy in full screen instead. Uh, and you see how much faster that is. Smoother and better. So we don't need that full screen functionality uh, anyways. But it is kind of annoying that it will break if you go into full screen. And that can happen, you know. Uh, so I have looked into how to uh, modify this iframe uh, YouTube uh, window here, but it's really difficult and I haven't really found anyone who have managed to do it. One thing I want to do is move this stupid picture-in-picture -picture button because there is a, a big drawback with this button. Uh, when, when you're visiting a different site that is not YouTube, that have embedded uh, YouTube links, I, I, I cannot think of any any in my head now, but uh, then you you know um, you have some information here. When you hover the video, you can see like the channel name and if you want to subscribe and things like that. And that's like a big banner that hovers over the top of the uh, embedded video, and and that means you cannot click this button on embedded videos because you have some other stupid element covering covering it. Uh, and there is really no way to do it. You can see the button, but you cannot click it. It's super annoying. So you have to visit the page on YouTube to be able to click the button and then you can move on with your life. So yeah, I'm, I'm currently researching how to fix this. Uh, what I actually would like to do is replace this uh, full screen button with the picture in picture button. That would be the best, uh, best thing. Uh, also, shout out here to the Bud Labs, Bud Lab girls. You you are doing a great, uh, uh, great job uh, representing the Bud Lab, Bud Labs organization. This is a promotion video we did for for I3S, a promotion dance uh, that I uh, choreographed. Um, I think it turned out all right. 
whatever. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, and of course, you can change colors and stuff, but let's not get into that, you know, uh, at least not in this video. I think I have maybe one or maybe two uh, Vivaldi videos up my sleeve. The the last and, and the coolest feature of them all, you know, we have to have to do that. And then we are done here uh, with the Vivaldi stuff. Uh, and um, have a great day, everybody. Bye.